Hey guys, it's Ed from Ed Shop Vlog. I'm here today uh, again to guys show you my next new little project I've been working on. Um, I know it's been a little bit since an update. I've kind of had a busy uh, last few weeks going uh, out of town, actually out of country. Um, some stuff with work and also got pretty sick. But I'm back. Today I want to show you guys something that I kind of came up with and designed. Other people have done it before, but this is my version of it. Um, with the classic NES system out this holidays, you know, the, the little mini Nintendo with the 30 built-in games. Um, hard to get, can't find them anywhere. Um, so what I decided is to kind of make my own using a Raspberry Pi, a Nintendo controller, um, put them together and use uh, emulators and ROMs to run my favorite games. Uh, so guys, check out the video, and here we go. Is we're taking an original NES controller. This is one of my original controllers from my system. I still have one laying around with a few handful of games. Um, and this is an original. Now, I did uh, one of these as a, as a test before. I did rip an original one apart and get it to work inside of here. Um, it's a lot more connections. Um, it's also very hard to get it to fit inside here due to the kind of the bigger, older chips. So, what I got is this, which is this is a USB NES controller. Um, this is used to basically plug into your computer and having like a retro controller. Um, you can get it here. You can get these on Amazon for like nine bucks. Um, I have a link below uh, and on my website here to show you where you can get this. Um, we're going to take this apart and put in a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero, I think version 1.3. It comes in a little bag. So it's pretty much a really small Raspberry Pi. It's pretty nice. It's got HDMI out. This is actually a mini HDMI out along with the SD card, of course. And then um, this is USB in and then power in. Um, even though it's two USB ports, only one allows for an input. With the this NES controller, we're going to basically solder directly to this input. Um, so we can basically eliminate this cable and actually use this cable for, to power the Raspberry Pi. Um, first off, let's go ahead and start taking it apart. And we can see what's inside the little NES controller. The board for this is a lot smaller um, than the original NES board. It's a, the original NES board is a lot bigger. Um, but this is good for us for what we're going to do. Because the Raspberry Pi here will be able to fit in quite nicely and not get in the way too much. As you can see here, it'll actually fit right above the little clock. Um, and the ports will kind of pop out nicely here on the top. What we'll do is we'll end up cut, cutting the plastic a little bit. We'll end up cutting the plastic a little bit here so that you can get to the ports. Um, this will be actually a really easy project, guys. You guys can do this yourself. As long as you're good at soldering, we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and uh, cut this, and let me get my soldering iron heated up. All right. We're going to go ahead and cut the wires here. Um, we're going to give ourselves just a little bit of slack. I don't know. Probably made belly this much. We can always uh, cut off what we don't need. All right. So we've got these two are power, the black and red are power, 5 volts, and the white and green are our data. And then we're going to basically run that into the Pi. Now the USB cord that we cut off, we can use this for power. Now you're not going to get any data out of this for what we're doing. Like basically when we're done, you can't plug this controller into a computer anymore. It's going to be its own self-contained unit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and strip off just a little bit on here, which will leave us, you know, the white. Sorry, white, green, black, and red. I'm going to cut this off. There we go. All right, I'm going to cut off. I can just cut off the white and green on this so we have the basically the black and red here um, for power. I'm going to go ahead and strip those so we have those open and strip so we can solder to it. And I'm going to then kind of see where I'm going to run these, three, these four wires for our actual controller. Um, on the back of the Raspberry Pi, let me point here. So this is going to be our USB input. Here, these two pads here are going to be for data. So we're going to basically run the white and green to one of these, both of these for data. Now to check to make sure we get them the right orientation, I'm going to go ahead and plug that cable in real quick and um, hit it with my multimeter and see where the which one is which. So we know on the back of the board, this pad here is white and the pad next to it is green. So that's how we're going to solder these up uh, for the connections in the internal Boxing. All right, before I solder 
this down solder that starts soldering to the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to go ahead and kind of get an idea of where I want it to be on the board, um, and then we'll go ahead and cut out the um, the slots here to access the port. So I'm going to kind of basically put it on here. Um, I don't basically you can't make it fit without taking without um, basically eating up one of the screw holes. I mean you could if you wanted the HDMI cord and everything to be on the internal, so you just have permanent wires coming out of it. Um, but I like that you can be able to unplug and plug in the HDMI. That's just kind of my personal, how, how I like it. You kind of see here, this is a little different than the regular NES. This actually has a screw on the board. The original NES didn't have any screws into the board. It kind of, when you screwed the whole thing together, it kept everything together. The screw's kind of messing me up. I could use it to hold the pie in place, actually. But then if I did that, I would eat up two screw holes, which Technically, it's probably fine. Hmm. Let's try that. I'm going to try to unscrew this here and go right through the pie. Alright. As you can see, that can, that can actually work. It would take up two screw holes. Let me see how it works closed. Uh, we have to cut some of these knobs off before I do that. All right, I believe that it'll be just fine eliminating two of the screw holes and not actually using all six screws to keep the case down, mainly because because the board itself is screwed down. You can actually use um, the buttons just fine, actually without the back on. It's different from a normal, regular NES. So I am going to use the screw to hold the Raspberry Pi in, as you guys can see here. Um, that'll hold it in place. I'm still going to use a little bit of hot glue just to make sure it stays in place well, but for now, that's where it's going to be. So I'm going to use an X-Acto knife here just to kind of plot out where I'm going to uh, screw these down or cut the case around so it'd fit. Let's see here. Basically, I might not actually have to cut. Let's see. Let's see how the HDMI cable fits in. Yeah, we're going to have to cut a little bit on the bottom just so it'll fit. Alright, so we're going to cut this port out here. Let's just get a mark it. Now, as you guys can see, obviously it doesn't want to close. Um, that's because of the screw nubs here um, are obviously getting away. Since we're not using those screw nubs, we're going to go ahead and cut them out. Just get, just, I just do it with a pair of uh, snips. You could use, uh, if you wanted to, you could use a Dremel, which we're going to use here in a second anyway, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this now. Like this. Sometimes it's just easier to cut it out with a pair of pliers. I'm not sure I'm doing the right one. Yeah. Hmm. Got both of those out. So that fits now. All right, it fits better. As you can see, it closes all the way. Now, it's not completely closing, and the reason for that is inside it has these two, the other two nubs. What this does, it kind of holds the, the board down better. Um, but obviously, since we have a Raspberry Pi in there now, it's kind of getting in the way. Let me double check, that's what it is. Yeah. So what we gotta do is we have to basically gonna have to file this down, this snub down, uh, just a little bit. And again, we'll use the Dremel. Let's do it at the same time though that we are going to be cutting out of here. So, and of course, safety glasses. And let's go ahead and grind this down. You probably want to remove the pie. You probably can remove the buttons too. If I do it, just to be safe. Okay, let's get to grinding.
And the pie's gonna go here, so we're gonna solder up the data lines of the USB right to the USB in the back. So just cut them to about the length I want, which is about, about there. Cut. We're just basically cut those wires, strip them real quick. Let's also do the same for the power. Now power, this is going to be basically our ground here, and these are 5 volts. This is where we're going to put our 5 volt in and also our um, 5 volt to go to the board itself on the uh, controller board. So this is where I'm going to solder to for that. Um, again, there's pinouts of these Raspberry Pi, so you guys can figure that out. I'll list that on my page. You guys get to my page on edsjunk.net or at the bottom link here. It'll basically send you over to a more detailed explanation of what I'm doing. Um, but I just want to show you guys. It's really easy to make one of these. It really, really is. And since that's pretty close for those, I'm going to cut those rather short. The only time I need to get in the bottom is to solder these, these uh, white and green USB plugs on. So, get some solder here. Got it. All right. Now that I got those two wires down um, on the bottom of it, I'm going to go ahead and secure the Raspberry Pi down to the board uh, with a screw and a little bit of hot glue. That way we can go ahead and start and get this thing together. It's really just that simple. At least the hardware version. You know, the software, a little bit more involved, but it's not difficult. All right, so let's put a little screw through. Actually, I'm just kidding. Let's not put the screw through. Let's put a little bit of hot glue down first. All right, hot glue's down. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and put the screw in. Okay. That's not going anywhere. Especially after we put the board, uh, the top of it, back down on it. I forgot to grind down the little nub to go on top of the pie, so let's do that real quick. Again, safety glasses and Dremel. All right, so now that it fits down, all we have to really do now is do our power um, for the board and also power from uh, the USB that we cut off, USB cable we cut off. You can use the same two points for both connections. It doesn't really matter. So basically, I'm going to do that and come here and do the same thing with our power coming in. Now that we got those two things done, pretty much it's done and ready to go. It's ready for software. Now to install the software, we're using a software called um, it's called RetroPie. Explains it. It's a really simple um, program. You basically install onto the card of the Raspberry Pi, just a simple mini SD card, and it just it's basically a lot of emulators. It's just like a MAME ROM emulation system. Um, it's real convenient. They've set it up really easy to basically configure your controllers. I'm not going to go through and show you guys how to install an operating system for a Raspberry Pi on an SD card. It's a very simple thing to do, and there's plenty of YouTube videos out there to do it. But I will link to how you can do that um, for specifically RetroPie. Um, basically like a cooking show. What do you know? It's already installed on this SD card. I've already tested it. I already have ROMs on this as well for the games that I own that are on this. Um, you can basically plug into your USB in to import the, the ROMs if you like. Since I, I have already soldered up the controller to the USB in port, I'm not too sure now that I think about it if you can do it after that, the fact. So maybe it'd be a better idea to install your ROMs onto the SD card and test your Raspberry Pi before you install it. I would probably say that. Test your operating system, get it loaded up with RetroPi, and make sure all your ROMs work that you want to use, and then maybe build this. But hopefully, I haven't built one of these versions yet. Um, that should be all we need. So I'm going to go ahead and route the cable here in a way. Mm. So basically these little nubs here are made to basically route the cable, the power cable. Let's see. Like this. That's just so it doesn't pull out. As you can see this little S. That way, if you pull on it, it doesn't pull out your solder, your solder spots. Yeah, the plastic on these cheap Chinese uh, knockoff strip almost instantly. So don't tighten them up too much. I can tell almost all of these are. So there's our controller back together with our HDMI out. Um, 
And yeah, I can tell that maybe this side of the controller could be a little better screwed down, but maybe just like I said, a little bit of super glue to fix that. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see how well it works. All right, guys, as you can see, the Raspberry Pi is now powering up. Um, it takes a little bit for it to boot, but it's all coming off of basically just this NES controller. All right, guys, we got the controller plugged in with power and HDMI. As you can see here, um, it's all booted up into the system. Um, you have RetroPie, which is kind of like your, just uh, what's it called, settings and stuff for, for, for your, your emulators. Um, and then Nintendo. Uh, if you click Nintendo, I've got a couple Super Mario Brother games on here that I own. I went ahead and downloaded the ROMs and threw them on here just to show you guys. It can run any ROM, anything, but just for kicks and giggles, let's, let's go old school, go original Mario. There it is, let's play. Beautiful. As you can see, we're playing here. I know I should have got the mushroom, but I'm just trying to show you guys. That was close. You guys get the idea. Um, you can pause and get right out of the game by pushing start and select at the same time and it goes out of it. Um, Alright guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, real simple, for with an NES controller, uh, plugged in with HDMI and power out. It, it's really just that, that simple. It's basically an NES Classic, um, all inside of a single NES controller, without anything extra. No box it has to plug it into, just an NES controller. This can be done with an SNES controller, as seen here. This is a USB SNES controller that works, and also Genesis. Any other, any of the USB controllers really you guys can find. Um, you can open them up and probably throw a Raspberry Pi in there, and it'll work. Um, sometimes it's a little different on where the ports have to come out of. It all just depends on how much room you have inside of those, and where you guys decide to, you know, put your HDMI port where, where it's accessible. It's a little harder on the SNES because you have the trigger buttons, so it kind of makes it hard to get the Pi up there. I actually, when I did it, I put it on the bottom of the controller, the SNES controller. I hope you guys like it. Um, Check out my other videos. Um, I've got a lot of other things going on, guys. I'm going to hopefully post some more here soon. But uh, if I don't hear from you guys uh, or see from you guys from Christmas, hope you guys have a good Christmas. And uh, hopefully you guys uh, make your own retro pie, uh, raspberry pie emulation controller. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.